What's up, everybody, and welcome to Wrestling Backlash. There really aren't too many wrestling rumors to talk about today in the wrestling world, so we will get right into the Raw recap. Oh, wait, there is one huge news item to share. How could I forget? The WWE announced during the Kentucky Derby on Saturday that WrestleMania would be held in Las Vegas next year, on April 19th and 20th, 2025. I have no idea how this is going to go, but it will be one hell of a week in Vegas next year. Blackjack and the Bloodline, Craps and CM Punk, Poker and Paul Heyman, Roulette and Roman Reigns. Shoot, I can go on and on, but I think I'll stop there. What better place to have the biggest spectacle in sports entertainment held at the entertainment capital of the world? I can hardly wait. Let us know what you think about this huge news that WrestleMania 41 is being held in Las Vegas in 2025. Leave a comment in the comment section below and don't forget to like and subscribe while you are down there. Okay, no more rumors or real world WWE stuff to highlight this week. Let's get right into the recap for Monday Night Raw. The Raw after our namesake PLE, WWE Backlash was pretty exciting. And the Backlash PLE did not disappoint this weekend. If you didn't get a chance to see Backlash, no worries. You can see our recap here on the top right corner of the screen. Take a look after this video. Raw opened up with Judgment Day coming out to the ring in solidarity. There was a little bit of friction inside the faction this weekend. One thing is for sure, Damian Priest knows what he wants out of the Judgment Day during his reign as world champion. In a surprise show of humility, he actually apologized to his brothers inside the Judgment Day. Damian went off on them a little bit at Backlash after his win against main event Jey Uso, and he realized his mistake. Finn was gloating that he was getting a bye in the King of the Ring tournament since Drew McIntyre is not medically cleared. But hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. Hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. Adam Pearce came rolling out and told Finn there's been a slight change of plans. There is no bye for you, Finn. In fact, his new opponent is none other than main event Jay Uso. Now, I have to admit, Jey Uso's entrance is getting better and better. I think the fans in Hartford missed the memo though, they didn't go nuts like they did in France. They dimmed the lights in the arena so everyone could light up their cell phone camera lights, but it was a dud of a moment. Hell, even the Cleveland Cavaliers fans had a better yeet fest than Hartford tonight. Here we go! Cal, Cal, Cal. But still, the entrance is awesome and Pat McAfee yeeting all over the place makes it that much better. The match is underway and Finn and Jay are getting into it. These two veterans gave a good match, but Drew McIntyre interrupted the match by walking down to the ring. Finn tried to close out the match, but Jay countered and pinned Finn to advance to the next round in the King of the Ring tournament. Not sure what Drew was trying to do in the ring since he's not medically cleared, but his impact influenced the match and Jay benefited from the distraction. But of course, Drew gets all pissed off and storms out of the arena in a black sports car, only to miss CM Punk by seconds. The camera follows Punk all the way from the backstage loading dock all the way to the entrance ramp, and CM Punk is ready to drop off one of his legendary pipe bombs. In an innovative way to call out Drew McIntyre, Punk held the show hostage and told the fans in attendance to tweet and post all of those pictures showing Drew that CM Punk is actually in the ring so he can check his social media and turn his butt around to get back into the arena. Long story short, Drew never showed up, and CM Punk told the camera, and I quote, If you make me go to Glasgow, Scotland, I'm going to be hiding in a bowl of haggis, and I'm going to pop out, and I'm going to break your face. Looks like the Scottish warrior has some unfinished business that he really needs to close out with CM Punk. Next up in the Women's Queen of the Ring tournament, it is EO Sky versus Natalya. I can't remember when the last time I saw Natalya in the ring, but I guess between her time over at NXT and her limited role on the main roster. I guess this was a nice gesture for her to put over EO Sky, especially as one of the last remaining wrestlers that were trained in the Heart Dungeon. Needless to say, EO beat Natalia with a moonsault from the top rope and pinned her to advance to the next round of the tournament. The next match of the night was Dragunov's first match on Monday Night Raw. This enigma is a great addition to the Raw roster, and guess who he drew for the first round of the King of the Ring tournament? Yup, that inaugural WWE Speed Champion Ricochet. So does anyone remember that match from a few years ago between Ricochet and Will Ospreay? Quite possibly one of the most acrobatic matches that I've ever seen. That same kind of match is what I can see happening with Ricochet and Dragunov for the next few years. High flying moves, top rope flips and kicks, flying in and out 
out of the ring, total non-stop action. You can see the nerves and tension on Samantha Irvin's face the entire match. These two stars are a perfect match for each other, and I hope the WWE continues to put Ricochet and Dragunov together after the King of the Ring PLE. They make some really good matches. Dragunov hits Ricochet with an H-bomb and pins him to advance to the next round, but my goodness was this match an instant classic. We are halfway through the show, and guess who's in the ring ready to go for her first match in the Queen of the Ring? Zoe Stark. She faced off against the Pitbull Ivy Nile. Any takers on who was going to win this match, I'll give you a second to take some bets. These two ladies are evenly matched and could have gone either way. Zoe Stark's highlight of the match was a missile drop kick from the top rope in the middle of the match. Zoe hits a Z360, and it was lights out for Ivy. Zoe advances to the next round. In the funniest part of the night, R-Truth asked Adam Pearce if they could defend their tag champions against another champion. In fact, back-to-back -back 2023 and 2024 national champions, UConn men's basketball team. Coach Hurley made a cameo appearance with the awesome Truth, and The Miz did his best to get Truth to listen to reason. I can't do this comedic timing justice. Needless to say, we need to keep our truth employed at all costs. He truly is a national treasure. Big Brunson Reed and Chad Gable are next in the ring, and it was over before it even started. Sami Zayn jumps into the ring and attacks Chad Gable. The referee rings the bell to stop the match, and then havoc ensues. Big Brunson Reed ends up being the last man standing as he destroys both Sami Zayn and Chad Gable in the center of the ring. The final hour of the show opens up with the women's world champion Becky Lynch cutting a promo and interview with Michael Cole. Michael asked Becky who she wants to face for her women's title. Now, this interview was weird to say the least to me. It was slow. The Hartford crowd wasn't into it. They started booing, and rightfully so. This must have been some time filler or something, because it was so uneventful and unentertaining. Liv Morgan cut their promo short and came down to the ring only to be cut off by damage control. Liv sneaks away and leaves Becky Lynch in the ring to defend for herself. Lyra Valkyria races down the ramp to help out Becky Lynch, which was a good way to get to the commercial break and set up the next match between Valkyria and Dakota Kai. But before the match started, there was a backstage interview with Sami Zayn, and he mentioned there is now a triple threat match for the Intercontinental Championship at the King of the Ring PLE. But did anyone catch him speaking a foreign language during his promo? I had no idea Sami spoke Arabic, and it sounded fluent too. What can't Sami Zayn do? Lyra Valkyria executes her Nightwing finishing move and defeats Dakota Kai to take on Zoe Stark in the second round of the Queen of the Ring tournament. And finally, the main event of the night, Sheamus vs. the Ring General, Gunther. What a matchup, and this could have easily been a finals match for the King of the Ring tournament. These two have had a history together for years, and it shows in this match. Any takers for the over-under on the number of chops to the chest in this match? I'll give you a hint. Sheamus's chest and back was beat red by the end of the match. I know that's not saying much because it usually is bright red, but Gunther chopped him so much that he looked like crispy red pepper. This match was truly a banger and can be tacked on the banger after banger after banger of Sheamus' matches. Of course, Ludwig Kaiser had to interfere and kick the crap out of Sheamus' knee. The referee kicked out Kaiser from ringside, but the damage was done, and the ring general took advantage of the injured knee of Sheamus. Gunther makes Sheamus tap out and advances to the next round. That wraps up Raw for this week. We will see you next week when we give you the highlights of the quarterfinal rounds of the King and Queen of the Ring tournaments. We will see you next time.